Madam Moderator, for the opportunity to con contribute. Uh, on behalf of the Baha'i International Community and the Coalition for the UN We Need, uh, I wish to thank the President of the General Assembly for the opportunity to contribute to this important conversation and join the chorus of voices in this space who have requested the incoming PGA uh, to continue with this precedent. So I'll start with a question for the panel and follow it with a, a short intervention. So my question is this, when we consider a focus on the future, how can we ensure that the outcomes of the summit of the future are not static, but are able to accommodate the multiple scenarios that will no doubt unfold in subsequent decades, building in, in other words, an element of learning? So as we are still at a relatively early stage uh, in this, this process and opportunities have been created for more formal and detailed contributions, I wish to articulate a few underlying principles which should serve as the foundation for the process going forward. By analogy, the longevity of a skyscraper is more dependent upon the strength of its foundation uh, than the beauty of the edifice. Without the hard work of the former, we cannot enjoy the latter. So the first of these, these three principles is that of the, the oneness of the human family. The sooner we recognize our collective and shared destiny, not just in rhetoric, but also in policy, the less suffering we'll see. Within the current international framework, this might start with an advancement of our understanding of sovereignty. Just as enlightened self-interest, for example, recognizes that the well-being of others leads to improvements in ourselves. An enlightened state sovereignty could shift zero-sum policymaking, as was referenced earlier, to a greater mutualism. The second principle, and this is related to the social contract referenced earlier today, is trust and trustworthiness. Trust is perhaps our most valuable asset in the field of governance. It's often called for and must be meaningfully built. Trustworthiness, being true to one's word, meeting commitments made, behaving based on genuine shared concern, these more soft dimensions, as they're known, are actually irreplaceable in a functioning international order and require greater emphasis in all proposed agreements and processes. The third, finally, is solidarity. One could see in the increased and welcome focus on future generations an opportunity to extend the bounds of our definition of solidarity beyond geography and even social boundaries to include a temporal dimension. While solidarity in words is easy, in action it can be far more difficult. It means short-term sacrifice for long-term benefits. It means expending political will, as was just referenced, to build consensus. It means a willingness to change one's opinion or approach in light of new information and wisdom. And finally, it means moving beyond some of our historical understandings of progress based principally on economic gain. In all of this and in the ongoing process, we wish to share that civil society, youth, scientists, indigenous peoples, and all others who may have a greater freedom for creativity and the capacity to build new coalitions should be included at every stage of this member state-led process. Thank you again.